In this video, we're going to learn about the anatomy of the clavicle, also known as the collarbone. The clavicle is an S-shaped bone connecting the acromion process of the scapula to the manubrium of the sternum. This connection forms part of the shoulder girdle, which provides support and mobility to the upper limb. Here are some important key anatomical features specific to the clavicle. It's the only long bone in the body that lies horizontally, running from the shoulder to the sternum. The clavicle is directly under the skin along its entire length, making it easily palpable. Unlike most long bones, the clavicle lacks a medullary cavity, which is the central cavity containing bone marrow. The clavicle primarily ossifies through membranous ossification, also known as intramembranous ossification. This process involves the direct conversion of mesenchymal tissue into bone tissue without the intermediate step of a cartilage model. Ossification of the clavicle begins remarkably early in fetal development, typically around the sixth week of gestation. While ossification of most long bones is largely complete by the end of adolescence, the clavicle continues to ossify well into early adulthood. Ossification typically completes around the age of 21 years, making the clavicle one of the last bones in the body to reach full maturity. The clavicle is the most commonly fractured long bone due to its exposure and its role in stabilizing the shoulder. The clavicle serves several main functions. It holds the arm away from the trunk, playing a crucial role in the function of the shoulder girdle. This allows for a wide range of movements of the upper limb. The clavicle acts as a bridge, transmitting forces from the upper limb to the axial skeleton. It provides attachment points for various muscles, including those involved in shoulder movement and stabilization. The clavicle protects important neurovascular structures located behind its medial shaft. These structures include the subclavian vessels and the trunks of the brachial plexus. The clavicle acts as a shield, reducing the risk of injury to these vital structures during activities such as impacts or falls. The clavicle consists of three parts, a shaft and two ends, medial and lateral. For better understanding, let's break it down and look at each part separately. The shaft of the clavicle has a gentle S-shaped curve. Its medial two-thirds is cylindrical and convex forwards, while the lateral one-third is flat and concave forwards. The weakest point of the clavicle is at the junction between the medial two-thirds and the lateral one-third. The superior surface of the shaft is smooth and subcutaneous between the attachments of the deltoid and trapezius muscles and it has the deltoid tubercle. The inferior surface contains the conoid tubercle and trapezoid ridge, providing attachments for the conoid and trapezoid parts of the coracoclavicular ligament. The costoclavicular ligament attaches to an oval impression at the medial end, while the subclavius muscle inserts into the subclavian groove which also houses the clavicle's nutrient foramen at its lateral end. The medial end of the clavicle articulates with the manubrium of the sternum, forming the sternoclavicular joint, which serves as the only bony attachment of the upper limb to the axial skeleton. The lateral is flattened and articulates with the acromion of the scapula, forming the acromioclavicular joint. Let's talk about how to identify the side of the clavicle. First, you'll want to check the medial end. This part is cylindrical in shape. Next, look at the shaft. The medial portion should be convex forward. And lastly, flip it over to find the nutrient foramen, or the subclavian groove, on the inferior surface. Once you've checked these three features, you'll know which side it belongs to. In this case, it's a right clavicle. 
Several important muscles attach to the clavicle. Let's look at one by one. On the medial end of the shaft, we have the pectoralis major on the anterior surface and the sternocleidomastoid on the superior surface. On the lateral end, the deltoid attaches to the anterior surface of it, while the trapezius attaches to the posterior surface. Underneath, the subclavius attaches to the inferior surface, and the sternohyoid is found on the posterior surface of the medial end. Let's now visualize the muscles attached to the clavicle. The pectoralis major attaches here at the anterior surface of the medial end. The sternocleidomastoid muscle connects on the superior surface of the medial end. Moving laterally, the deltoid attaches to the anterior surface of the lateral end. And just behind that, the trapezius muscle connects to the posterior surface of the lateral end. Now, looking at the inferior surface, the subclavius muscle is attached to this area. Lastly, the sternohyoid muscle is attached to the posterior surface of the medial end. Let's look at the major ligaments attached to the clavicle. The coracoclavicular ligament is extremely strong and connects the clavicle to the coracoid process. It has two parts, the trapezoid ligament laterally and the conoid ligament medially. This ligament stabilizes the acromioclavicular joint. The costoclavicular ligament is short, flat, and rhomboid-shaped. It's the main stabilizer of the sternoclavicular joint and serves as the axis of movement during clavicle elevation. Finally, the interclavicular ligament connects the clavicles across the top of the sternum. Let's cover the joints associated with the clavicle. The sternoclavicular joint is a synovial saddle joint located at the medial end where the clavicle connects with the manubrium of the sternum. The acromioclavicular joint is a synovial plane joint at the lateral end, where the clavicle meets the acromion of the scapula. The clavicle is the most commonly fractured long bone in the body, typically due to direct trauma or a fall on an outstretched hand. Fractures usually occur at the weakest point, the junction between the medial two-thirds and lateral one-third. Injury to the neurovascular structures behind the clavicle is rare, as they are protected by the subclavius muscle. When there is a clavicle fracture, you'll notice an obvious deformity caused by the displacement of fragments. The lateral fragment is often depressed due to the weight of the upper limb. Whereas the medial fragment is elevated because of the pull from the sternocleidomastoid muscle, that wraps up our look at the clavicle. I hope you found this breakdown helpful and informative. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more anatomy insights.